I never played Yu-Gi-Oh before Master Duel, and this is my new player experience after a year and a half essaying. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. All right, you know what? My interest has peaked. We've got time for an intro today. I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh before Master Duel. This is my new player experience after a year and a half. Okay, let's, uh, let's get a real person's new player experience here. Uh, prior to Master Duel, I live in a country that never had the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, and anime was never officially translated to my language. My only introduction to Yu-Gi-Oh! was through Nux Taku's progression series, R.I.P. <laughs> ah, when the hentai YouTuber introduces you to Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know things have gone really, uh, downhill for the game, am I right? Uh, my only introduction to Yu-Gi-Oh! was through, uh, the, uh, the progression series, and since they never explained the most basic rules of the game before Master Duel, I only knew that monarchs are cool and strong, and Cyber Dragon is the best card ever made. Imagine, like, crafting in Master Duel format, right? Like, this guy, like, he knows nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh! except, like, Nux's progression series. He loads up and installs Master Duel, he gets online... And he starts, like, crafting, right? And he knows from the from Nux's progression series that the best card in the game is Cyber Dragon. And then he goes and he just spends, like, all his gems crafting, like, three copies of Cyber Dragon. Actually, I think it's only a rare, to be fair. Uh, maybe he builds a full Sidra deck or something. Anyway, um, I didn't even know its effect. My ex wow, well, technically, Cyber Dragon is an effect that summons. Uh, or, sorry, it's an effect that... Wait, what is it called? It's not a, It's not a built-in summon. It is technically a built-in summon, but, okay, I think Cyber Dragon and, Dot and Grapha are technically different ruling. Anyway, that's not important. My experience with card games as a whole is just a month of Hearthstone. All right. First look. I randomly found out about Master Duel through some VTuber stream, and then I remembered uh, about Yu-Gi-Oh! So I thought, why not try it? The tutorial was brief, but some moments made sense from when I watched Prog. I don't know how someone can just sit and watch a video of, of like, a video that, like, they just know un they don't understand anything. Like, that's kind of crazy to me. Like, the fact that someone can just sit and watch an entire episode not knowing anything is just... I mean, that's dedication, I suppose. Uh, my Hearthstone instincts were getting to me, so I would always forget about changing phases and would accidentally change my monsters to defense. In the shop, I bought bundles in the Battle Pass because they're cheap, and then I bought Cyber Dragon and the Cyber Dark Structure because Bat Chess Sydra Makes sense. Uh, I bought just one and I didn't even know what it was, so at first I wasn't using it. So I got back to the solo mode section. Needless to say, that tutorial at release was awful. Very good tutorials weren't available. Uh, I think the only good tutorial is like the new tutorial, right? That they put into the game, right? Because I think there's like a secondary one added to do restart that was recently added. That one is a lot more better and a lot more extensive, but the fact that that wasn't on release is in in insane to me. Um... Wait, what is this thing? Uh, yeah, Dual Strategy 2, I think, is the one that they added later. That is actually, like, significantly better, you know? Uh, tutorial and Solo Gates. I mean, it taught you important stuff, but that was not nearly enough to call it a good tutorial. Hilariously enough, they didn't even teach you Fusion or Ritual Summoning, as if you're assumed to already know them. After finishing the tutorial, they send you to the Monarch Solo Gate, and I was very excited to finally play Monarchs, because they were basically the only thing I knew. They showed me Mega Monarchs and Erebus. I swear I spent three minutes trying to read it. This is actually where the real Yu-Gi-Oh! problem appeared. One of the first cards I've ever read. Bayonator the Baneful Bar. <laughs> Once per turn, target a face of monster your portal controls, it loses a thousand for each monster your portal controls. Okay. What they give you almost immediately after that. <laughs> How the might we went from this to this. <laughs> That was after I read and comprehended Pot of Extravagance, so I was already exhausted with the amount of text. After this gate, they give you a Monarch Structure deck, so I could finally change my deck after playing with the boring starter for so long. I finally found confidence to go play Ranked. And then... Dun dun dun. Thank you, Skilled Drain Enjoyer. It wasn't that bad, actually. Mostly because my opponents were coughing babies with the same starter deck, and of course they couldn't compete with the mighty Tribute Summon Ryza, Set Fissure. <laughs> <laughs> up, <laughs> up until I found my first Drytron opponent. My hand wasn't even that bad, but what could I do against six negates? I wasn't actually that frustrated because I thought it was the meta deck, and surely after playing a lot, I can make my deck just as strong, clueless. <laughs> this, is, this is just music to my ears, dude. I love hearing about new players' experience. I also tried to use my Sidra deck, but since I didn't know fusion summoning, all I ever did was Chimera-tect myself to Dulcera. 
and then returned to Monarch. <laughs> oh my god, this guy queues into Reich and then just fucking super polys himself twice. And then, you know what? Let's go play Monarch. Get get chat. What's important to note is that the most memorable monsters my opponent summons are the ones that have animations. Nightmare Unicorn and Zeus specifically were the most memorable. I just remember seeing it for the first time and frantically reading its effects and thinking how screwed I am. My first Zeus encounter was actually more interesting. Unlike Unicor, I was somehow able to comprehend what it does. So defeating Zeus was my first hardcore challenge to overcome. Wow, you go on hard mode, out one Zeus. Obviously, I failed to realize that it was not once per turn, so I lost that game. I also remember how I beat VFD Pass from Virtual World. Stormforth does miracles. <laughs> Let's go. That's how it went roughly four months of my Mass 2 Duel experience. At some point in those four months, I realized that I forgot to put the new Monarch cards that were in the solo loaner. So I went back and bought my packs to replace my shield wings and garbage. <laughs> You've been playing the Monarch, like, standard solo mode deck for four months, dude. Holy crap, that's insane. <laughs> How I became a Yu-Gi-Oh player. For four months, I was playing solo mode, sometimes ranked, and I watched Duel Logs' top 10 videos. Obviously, solo gates that were focused on other types of summons were extra hard to me. Especially Ritual infu Infusion, because they never explained them. Links were really easy, except the part where zoning matters. XEs were harder. Synchro and Pendulum were completely incomprehensible. Really? Synchro's not that bad, is it? I, I th the tutorial also teaches you Synchro, I'm pretty sure. I think the concept of a tuner was one of the last things I learned about the game. I played through the Shurinui gate by purely clicking buttons. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of rules thing wasn't that big of a deal to me, unless it's something dumb like missing the timing. I was enjoying the hard nature of Yu-Gi-Oh. Obviously, I fell for the infamous MST negate trope and learned the hard way. Less funny moments include me not understanding why I can't activate normal spells during my opponent's turn, or negating monsters with Imperm and then watching it activate its graveyard effect. That's, that's a very simple error, to be fair, you know. Uh, to be, like, in, in, like, logically in your brain, if you don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! and you don't understand it, you obviously, like, think to yourself, well, if I just destroy your Dark Hole with MST, then your card is destroyed, right? So it doesn't work. Um, but, you know, that's obviously not how it works, and, like, the, uh, very sort of less obvious one, I suppose, is, like, a card that activates in the graveyard. You know, you negate the monster, but then when it goes to the graveyard, somehow it activates. It doesn't really make sense logically in your brain. And then you obviously start to, like, develop knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh! rulings and stuff, and then it clicks. But until that point, I guess it does, it is kind of hard, right? Um, eventually, I decided to build another deck. Something that includes an extra, but wasn't very hard to play. Something that could, flace, that could force me to play more staples. Something. Quick effect, send this from your hand to the graveyard and target a fusion you control. It gains a thousand attack and defense. If this card is normal summoned or flip face up, add an invocation from your deck to your hand. I built Invoked. To be fair, Invoked I think was pretty good for the first like, what, six months of Master Duel? I had and still have a personal rule to not net deck anything, so my decks were all quite funny. For example, I play Ranryu that I randomly found in the deck editor as an extender to summon Link Alistair or Verte for DPE. <laughs> <laughs> With this deck, I also entered the first ever Duelist Cup. At that point, I already watched a few tubers, and Farfa specifically caught my attention. Farfa L. Aww. Right now, my highest rank is Master 2 with Tier Limits, because I'm too lazy with the ladder, and I'd rather play the LCS. Shout out to me for going 7-0 with Dream Mirror Assault Mode, my biggest achievement in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, so far. Overall, I enjoy how hard rewarding the game is, but with the way things are going, it's not hard to understand why it's not fun for a lot of people. What an incredible story. What a what an incredible heartwarming story. I just I I I can't believe that you forced yourself to struggle through the game that much. Uh because it is so it is so difficult, like especially entering Masado. Here is the problem, right? So ignoring like Masado, um Yu-Gi-Oh as a card game is a social game. That's how card games are. They are social experiences, right? Um, if you go to Locals for the first time ever, and you want to decide you want to play, like, a trading card game, it's not physically possible for you to play it by yourself. You can't do that. You're going to need to enter a tournament, sit down, talk to people, uh, ask people if they want to duel, introduce yourself. 
So already that by itself for like the nerd space that is gaming culture and Yu-Gi-Oh, that is very difficult. That is that that's a that's an issue in and of itself, you know. So I can completely understand the reluctancy for that. Um so it Yu-Gi-Oh is social in that regard and it helps you, you know, come out of your shell, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and also talk and uh, discuss things with other people. Um, and they can help you along the way. But of course, naturally, you're at locals. And guess what? People at locals sometimes aren't the best players. And people who aren't the best players aren't going to give you the best advice for the what, what is the strongest, most optimal way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! as a new player. Um, the biggest crutch for this, I would suggest, should be, in theory, Master Duel. Master Duel should theoretically be the best way to learn how to play the game. Because it's easier than real life, because in real life you have to really sit and read all your cards because you don't really understand what everything is doing. But also Master Duel, I suppose, has the negative of where, because it's digital, you can literally just click all of your buttons and then eventually something will happen. Kind of like how he described how he defeated the uh, Shirinui, um, what's it called? I'll read that in a second, thank you. Um, kind of very similar to how he completed the Shirinui solo, so, uh, solo mode, which was just clicking buttons. He finishes the solo mode, but has no idea what he did, and has no clue what's going on, right? Um, that is, um, that's kind of sad at the same time, but also kind of makes sense. Uh, because you, it's just an overwhelming amount of text that you're going to be sitting dealing with for this whole time. Thank you so much, Yannick. I really hope that he posts a follow-up here and explains a little bit more on, like, what kept you going? Maybe I'll ask that. But overall, that, this was like a very interesting deep dive into a player's new Master Duel experience. Okay, here we go. Uh, since Farfa asked, this is why I kept playing. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> um, I'm not actually sure. It's actually more bizarre because my most played games are story-driven games and roguelikes. It was a combination of a few conditions. I was bored after I stopped playing Apex Legends, Genshin, and Overwatch, so I needed a new play a bit in the evening game. And when it comes to anything that isn't gameplay, Master Duel is extremely generous to new players. Crafting is good. Uh, crafting system, good battle pass, and a lot of free rewards kept me playing like Hearthstone never could. I saw the complexity of cards as a challenge to improve my language comprehension, to be honest. <laughs> that... No, dude. That, that's a very nice byproduct, but the fact that someone is using Yu-Gi-Oh! to improve their English spoken language is so funny to me. Because yeah, every card is a book. So I guess it makes sense. Um, or I just like when games are hard and I wasn't prejudiced by nostalgia. My favorite parts of the game right now are in card lore. World Legacy and Alba's story are surprisingly engaging. I played through all four World Legacy gates three times already. Jesus, okay. I didn't know there was such an avid solo mode uh community. For me, solo mode is get in, done, finish, make a video on it that's funny, and leave. Uh, that Solo mode is the least appealing thing to me right now. They haven't made it, like, um, super good. Um, it's gotten a little bit better, to be fair, but... Vice's storyline, though, is mega boring. Holy shit. Oh! I guess I can't deny how much Duologs and Farfas content keep me in the game. LCS alone made me realize just how massive Yu-Gi-Oh really is, and I love it. I will bring Malefics for the next episode. Base. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Alright, well, there it is. Um, Cozy Iron, uh, Slenderman's full story for playing uh, and starting Yu-Gi-Oh! In the journey. This, I love these, like, um, case studies, basically. Because I'd love to hear more from, like, how people have, like, started Masudu and then continued, and I want to know what their journey is, but it's very hard to, like, find that, because I guess people aren't really openly talking about that regularly.